Hello and welcome to the fourth video tutorial on this 10 part video tutorial series on creating an e-commerce site using Drupal and Ubercart. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal, and this tutorial series is being brought to you in collaboration with myself as well as Ubercart.org. If you're new to the video tutorial series, I'll just give you a brief recap. In the first video tutorial, we went ahead, we downloaded uh, Drupal, we set up our web space, uploaded Drupal to our FTP server, and uh, got everything installed. In the second video tutorial, we took a brief detour and we covered some some key concepts in Drupal, so nodes, modules, themes, whatnot, just to give you an idea of the common lingo that's used. In the third video tutorial, we went ahead and downloaded all the modules that we need. We got those installed and we got those uh, created, but we haven't set anything up. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set up all the modules except for uh, Ubercart. So there are a few things that we've got to do to start off, but let's get uh, right into it. First thing we're going to do, if you remember, we have the admin module that was set up, uh, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to navigate our site. We're going to go down into admin, system, site information, and we're just going to take a look at some, some brief details. So some of this stuff was set up when we installed Drupal. Remember I named my site. I didn't provide a slogan, but you can do that if you want to. Um, email address, uh, this is you know the email address for the site. The front page for our site is actually configured of the 10 posts that are promoted to the front page. This is by default in Drupal, and you'll notice here that our default front page is slash node. If we want to create our own front page, uh, we can go ahead and then we can provide that URL here, and that will be used as the front page. So I can give you an example of that a little bit later in some of the other tutorials. Two things to note here. Um, sometimes you'll have users that will get to a page that they're not allowed to view, so admin slash whatever, if they're not administrators. Um, there is a default 403 page, but we can actually create one ourselves and then provide that URL so that users see that a little bit more friendly. So sometimes, you know, when you get to a site and you go to someplace different and it says, oops, you know, you're in the wrong area type thing, that's how they, uh, they do that if it's a Drupal site. Secondly, uh, default 404 page, so that's when a page isn't found. Again, we can provide a custom URL for people there so they can say, oops, you know, our content's missing, sorry about that. Maybe you want to check out these other links. Um, alternatively, there are a few modules out there that will uh, build on this. So you can, uh, one of them is a search. So if they find a 404 page not found, it'll do an auto search. So I would encourage you to check out Drupal.org for some of those modules. Unfortunately, they're beyond the scope of this tutorial series. Second thing I want to show you just before we get going is the file system. So we're going to be uploading a lot of images for our products. We want to make sure that our file system is configured properly. Uh, if this uh, isn't configured properly, so I'll show you here, uh, create something that doesn't exist and we'll save that configuration. And you'll see here, I'm getting a, uh, an error because this, this couldn't be created, so this doesn't exist. So if you come here and you've got a couple uh, red boxes don't exist, you need to check your server configuration pages. So mine appear all good, I've got my temp directory, you wanna make sure you have that as well. Um, so, that, so that's just something I wanted to show you just quickly. Other thing to set up, people. We're gonna have um, different users registering on our site when they buy products and whatnot. So, uh, you can set the anonymous user's name here, so if somebody leaves a, con uh, a comment, perhaps, if you have those set up and they're not a registered user, it will say anonymous. You could also include this as visitor, see some people do that. The administrator role, obviously, if we created another one, uh, we can change that. Here, uh, perhaps more importantly, visitors can't create a, uh, uh, an account on my site unless uh, the administrator uh, approval is provided, so you can change that if you want to. Also require email notification when a user creates an account. This is new in Drupal 7 when canceling a user account. Uh, you can disable the account, but keep the content. So if they provided a bunch of comments, uh, posted a bunch of content, uh, you wanna keep that, you can go ahead and do that, but you have some other options as well. So just quickly going through these things, default picture if you wanna upload one on your web server and you can provide that URL here. Uh, this picture display uh, is choosing thumbnail, so I'll show you some of those presets uh, in a second, but uh, we do have some other options here. So, so this is where you would select that if you were going to change that. Again, maximum upload dimensions, file size, just quickly going through this here. XML sitemap, I'll show you uh, I'll show you this when we set up the XML sitemap, but if you wanted to include users, you can go ahead and choose them as included and change their priority. Perhaps most importantly, if you want to customize your site, you can change all of the emails that are actually sent out during the various actions on your site. Uh, so you'll see here, you know, your default messaging, you can go ahead and change that. And then we enable tokens, so uh, 
you know, you can add in your token here. So this username, anytime it, this is going to a specific user, rather than have user colon name, it will actually put in the username of the user. So that's a little bit, uh, so that's cool. It makes everything dynamic on your site. Uh, but that's just a quick overview of the user account settings. So lastly, before we're configuring our modules, I just want to show you the uh, image styles that we were just talking about. So uh, one of the neat things you have here is that you can have users that upload all kinds of different sizes of photos, or you could be doing that yourself. Um, and uh, we have modules installed that will automatically scale those, crop them, and whatnot. So remember, we uh, we're using the thumbnail for, for user images. Those automatically get scaled to 100 pixels by 100 pixels uh, with upscaling allowed, so it will stretch the photo if, uh, if you upload something that's smaller than 100 by 100. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if we wanted to change that, uh, we could override this and then change that scaling. You'll see that Ubercart adds a bunch of different um, presets that, again, you can override if you'd like to, but we'll see these uh, used throughout our site when we start setting up Ubercart. So those are the four areas that we just wanted to touch on that come with Drupal Core, but now let's get into configuring some of our, our modules that we installed. So first, we set we installed the Meta Tags module. Um, and just before we look at that, we actually installed the page titles module as well. I hadn't realized because I didn't use meta tags uh, in a while actually, um, but meta tags also includes page titles right now, uh, or going forward. So we don't need the page titles module. So we can go ahead and we can disable that and uninstall it. Um, and when we go to set up meta tags here, you'll see we've got some global settings. This actually is the page title that it's setting. So current uh, current page title uh, with the you know the site name. So here. You'll see up here, this is what I'm referring to, meta tags, uh, colon, Ubercart tutorial series, uh, or whatever it was I named it. Yep, or Ubercart tutorial series, that's the name of my site. So the current page, and then uh, and then the site name. So then for the front page, we can override this if we'd like to, but we see that currently the, the front page is using just the site name, and then uh, the canical URL is that, that's the kind of the base URL, the, the ultimate URL that everything should be looking back to. So if we wanted to override that, we could change it, but I'm happy with using site name. Uh, perhaps most importantly is your content. So you'll see here, these are the defaults for content. So we'll use the node title, whatever we name our node, um, and then our site name. So our site name is the Ubercart tutorial series. Uh, so if that's a keyword that you're using, you always wanna have them in your page title. Uh, you know, that's good for SEO. Um, your description by default will be your node summary. So I'll show you what that means. Um, but we'll typically be overriding this for each piece of content. Uh, but if you wanted to change the defaults, you could do that so here. Uh, and then you also have your taxonomy term and then your, your user. So remember, we just set up our user there. Um, so that's meta tags. Um, uh, you'll be using a lot of them if you want to uh, optimize your site for search. Um, so the second thing we're going to check out is uh, color box. So again, we're going to configuration media color box. And what Colorbox does is it provides a nice overlay when you click on an image. It'll kind of open up this JavaScript uh, little window without reloading your page and show you kind of a, a zoomed in image if you'd like it to. So you'll see here we, we get an error. We need to download the Colorbox plugin um, and put it in the Sites All Libraries Colorbox folder. So um, I know I hadn't done that, so let's go ahead and we'll do that together. I'll show you what, uh, what we have to do here. So we're going to go ahead and we will just download the current version. Just make sure I'm on my desktop. And yep, I'm just gonna replace that. And then I'm just gonna open it up here. Oops, I'll extract that to color box. And then I would just hit yes to all. So I've already done that, so don't worry about that. So we'll close that. And now what we need to do is we need to open up our FTP client. It's a little bit large for the screen, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get to Toronto Website Developer. I'll make this a little bit smaller so you can see. So we will go to Ubercart Sites. All. We're going to create this as our. Libraries is what it tells us to make. And then what we are going to do is upload color box. We just take the, I'll actually show you here. So we went into color box, we take color box and we just upload that. 
Okay, so with color box there, we go back to our site. We can reload this. And of course, I probably installed it to the wrong spot, so just bear with me. So sure enough, what I did was install it to the wrong site. So we want UC Tutorial Sites. Oh, here we want Libraries. Reinstall Upload Color Box. So once that's done, we'll resume page here. And we see that the error goes away. We have our plugin uh, installed. So that's good. Just going to close the FTP client here. And one thing that we want to notice here under the advanced settings, we can actually deactivate color box on specific pages. So if you're in admin pages, you don't want to see it or note add and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's color box. Um, next thing we want to do configuration search and meta URL aliases. What we want to do is we want to actually create some patterns. So by default, uh, Drupal has some automatic URLs when you're creating content. So if you create a new page, uh, let's say, or article or anything here, it'll be content slash node title. So whatever we provide as a node title. I think that's a little bit ugly. So what I like to do is my default is usually just node title. My articles I like to have as articles slash node title. Um, basic pages, I just like to have the node title, so that's good. Products, what we're going to have is product slash node title. And for product kits, uh, we will put it as product slash kits slash And to be honest, I usually don't set this up, so this may not even work, but we will set that. Um, taxonomy terms, so you're going to have your vocabulary and term. I usually leave that. That's fine. So you know, it'll be catalog slash term name and then you know, tag slash uh, whatnot. User paths, again, user slash whatever. You can change that if you'd like to. So I'll go ahead and save my configuration here. Okay, so that so those were our patterns. We have those set up now. If you're say you already have a site and you are watching this video tutorial on how to improve your site, um, or if you have a bunch of content, you went ahead and you realized you screwed up your patterns. What you can actually do is a neat thing to do is you could delete all of your content. So if I had a bunch of content, this would say you know 100 nodes or whatever. Delete the aliases. All of them have been deleted. Then you just go to bulk update. I want to create all my content paths update. And then you would have just updated all your content to your new path. So if I had, you know, articles slash whatever, and there was previously content slash whatever, they would now be articles. So that's a, that's a nice way to change things. You don't have to go back through everything and do it manually. Um, so one thing I'm going to show you here that's going to lead into another is if you go into settings for your, your, um, for your path auto, you're going to see update action here. So if you changed all of your content, um, and you know, you'd already submitted it to search engines. They knew it as content slash node title. Uh, you know, they'd be screaming, Hey, your, none of your URLs work. And we want to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, we don't anger the search engines because we want them to keep our site indexed and we want them to be able to find our content. So the redirect module actually allows us to do that. So we're going to actually create the new alias, delete the old alias from our, from our, um, from our table. But if we redirect the, um, module, if we go to settings here, we can automatically create a URL, uh, a redirect when a URL is changed, and it'll be a 301 permanent move. And that means something to Google, they'll know that the page no longer exists, permanently use the new URL. So this is a good thing, and I'll actually show you what we're talking about here. So let's add a, a basic page here quickly. So we're just gonna create the, a test page, and we will do, uh, where are we here? So automatic, we're gonna keep this as automatic. So we'll go ahead and we'll save. And we'll see we have, you know, uc Toronto website developer.com slash test, right? But because we told it to take the node title, so node title is test. So now if we edit this, and actually just before we edit that, I'll go close color box, and I will show you our URL aliases. See, we have alias, so the system actually creates node two, and we named it test, right? So that's how the system matches everything up. Everything will always have an internal uh, URL. That's what this system URL refers to. So now if we change this, and I want to create a URL. Oops, sorry, not a redirect. Uh, URL path. Don't want to have it as uh, automatic. Peter is awesome, because I generally am pretty awesome. We can go ahead and save this. And now we see that it's Peter. You know, a little bit ugly stuff here. Those should be dashes, but we'll have to fix that. Uh, not good on a video tutorial series when you do things you haven't tested before. Um, but if we reload our URLs here, 
we see the alias says Peter is awesome, and it's actually node two. Um, so, uh, so that's an issue, right? So if somebody went to test, you'll see they actually get redirected to Peter is awesome, and that happens by going to configuration, search URL redirects, and we see that. We previously had test, it's redirecting to node two. Node two is actually has an alias, says Peter's awesome. Uh, and it's being told, you know, and everyone's being told that it's a permanent 301 redirect, right? So so that's that kind of system in action there. Um, one thing we should check out here is URL aliases, patterns. Oops, sorry, not patterns, whatever, settings. Ah, and I just realized, stupid mistake. So because we actually manually set the um, path as Peter space is awesome space. Um, it takes the the space and actually makes it percent twenty because that's what it uh, that's what its ASCII code is. So um, that's why that didn't work. Stupid on my part. If we used, um, I'll show you actually what I'm talking about here rather than talking vague generalities. We'll change this test. So we'll make the title Peter is awesome. And then we'll go to our URL settings here. We'll create a general URL or a generic URL. And we'll see Peter dash awesome, right? It removes the is because that's in our settings. Um, it replaces the space with the dash. So uh, if it were an automatic URL, that would have worked properly. So uh, bad on my part. Um, checked out the redirect module. So next thing we're gonna just check out is global redirect because you'll probably remember we set that up. Um, I just gotta remember where global redirect is. We're in system global redirect. So we set up, uh, we enabled the global redirect and it can be confusing between the redirect module and the global redirect. What global redirect is actually, uh, it takes it on a broader scale. And so, uh, you know, if you have Toronto website developer slash, this would be one URL, this would be two. Google would see it as two different. So global redirect, uh, just make sure that that's all one page. Uh, the non-clean to clean, right? You know, if you have your clean URLs enabled, uh, you don't really have to change any of this kind of stuff. It's all self-explanatory, but I just wanted to flag that we enabled this um, and that's kind of the difference. So, you know, slash zero on taxonomy terms, all that kind of stuff. Probably doesn't mean a lot to you. Don't worry about it. Just enable this, use it. It's a great module. Next thing we want to check out uh, and we're almost done. I know we're flying, but uh, we'll get into the meat in the next couple of tutorials. So we're going to check out sitemap. So remember we uh, enabled the sitemap module and what this does is creates a nice uh, map for Google and other search engines to come and check out where all your content is. Uh, so this exists at sitemap. So if we go check this out, you'll see we have one page. That's because we haven't rebuilt the links, uh, but we have one page for our site, uh, which uh, search engines know about because we don't want them going to admin pages and, and whatnot. So that's the list. So that's if you have multiple uh, XML sitemaps, you can create them. Uh, search engines here. We want to submit our search engine to Google and Bing, right? So we would go ahead and save this configuration. Um, don't submit more than one day, uh, one a day, because we don't want to bombard Google and Bing. They don't like it. Um, but and we'll only submit it if it's updated. So um, the site will take care of that. Make sure you're not constantly submitting the same sitemap. So we'll go ahead and save that. All right. So settings. Here we have no minimum time, right? So that's this is kind of when. Uh, uh, you know, the minimum time will last before they're regenerated, right? So we actually want to have a, a one day uh, on hours, depending upon how often you update your site. But if you have a pretty active site, you can do it in terms of, uh, or sorry, I said one day, in terms of, uh, you know, one hour, three hours, whatnot. Right, so including the style sheet for uh, for humans, that's what this is. Uh, that's why we can read it because we've included a CSS style sheet. Advanced settings, the only thing that you want to check out here is this is where your actual sitemap will live. So public, whatever your public folder is, slash sitemap. Um, your default base URL, right? So ours is uh, UC Toronto Website Developer. Um, if you had you know www there, or if you wanted to remove that, that's how you can control that. So, uh, so those are two things to note there. Um, in terms of our content being included, you'll see here if we look at our menus, uh, it tells us all of these menus are excluded. Uh, if you remember when we set up sitemap, we enabled the menu uh, module. So that's why we have this ability. If you don't, it's probably because you didn't enable the menu module, so you wanna go back and check that out. If you wanna enable your menus, you can go ahead and include them here, totally up to you. Content, uh, this is probably more important. So you'll see here that our articles are being included, basic pages, products, product kits. Those are all by default. So if you click on product here, I'm sorry, not product, basic page, 
go to XML sitemap. We're going to choose include or default priority. We'll make it a six, right? So it's going to be higher than some of the other stuff. And what that means is when um, on your sitemap here, you'll see your page is listed a little bit up further to the top. Um, I mean, arguably, if you have a new site, uh, Google's not necessarily going to index all of your content. So that's why you provide some priorities to get some pages up to the top to make sure that they do get um, um, searched and indexed. So now if we look here, we see that this is included. So um, we won't do it together, but you want to go ahead and make sure that all of your stuff is included because you want Google to find all of your uh, all of your content. Same with taxonomy terms, right? We want them to be able to find our pages. So uh, we would go ahead and include those and then uh, users and all of the links are here. So if we go into tags, you'll see that we have an XML sitemap uh, possibility there. So so that's that. I encourage you to do that um, based on you know our tutorials going further that uh, forward. That will uh, that will exist. So rebuild links. So we have the opportunity to rebuild, right? We can go ahead and rebuild it. We don't necessarily have to, we just added one page. But now if we go to our XML sitemap, you'll see that we have Toronto Website Developer and Peter is awesome, right? And you'll see the priority as being 0.6. Um, yeah, so that's the XML sitemap. Uh, next thing that we're gonna check out, we didn't actually get it when we, uh, when we got all the rest of our um, modules but went ahead and got the verification module. And the reason why we did this is because um, if you're going to be uh, using webmaster tools for Google um, and uh, other sites, they're gonna to wanna to make sure that you own um, you know, the website that you're trying to collect some data on. Um, so when we went to enable some of the other search engine modules, if you didn't have verification, uh, you would get this notice that says, you know, you should use the verification module to uh, ensure that you can, uh, you know, track data. Uh, specifically, I think it was when we uh, Google Analytics, when we when we get to that, if you don't have this, it will prompt you to go ahead and download it. Um, so that is available at google.org slash project slash site verify. So we just go ahead, copy this link, if you have the, oops, if you have some modules installed, you can just go install a new module, set it up. Remember, exact same system as we did before. Um, and then again, beyond the scope of this video tutorial, but if you set up for Google Webmaster Tools uh, or Yahoo, um, you'll get a verification meta tag or you can get a file. Um, and when you get a file, you can use that to, to download um, and then upload it to your site. So that's how you verify your site to, to collect some data. So. Uh, I encourage you to do that. Um, but the last module that we're going to look at is our system Google Analytics. So if you set up uh, a Google Analytics account, uh, when you do that, they're going to give you a UA property ID. This is where you input that. Um, and then once you do that, you can collect stats on your site to understand kind of what's going on. Um, key things here, single domain. Uh, I assume that most will be single domain, so that's where you can set that up. In terms of pages, uh, I don't like uh, admin pages to be collected because it doesn't really help me. I know that I'm the admin on my site. Uh, so these are all set up by, by default. You can remove them or add them depending upon what you want to do. Especially roles is a good thing. So I know I don't like my administrators to be uh, caught in my uh, my analytics because it, you know typically your administrators are on your site for a long time. So it'll look like someone's staying there for a while, uh, kind of skew your results. Again, users, you can allow them the ability to opt in or out. Um, but you can also see that in terms of privacy if, if someone's universal web tracking is opted out. Um, so just different settings here you can check out. Uh, neat thing in, in the newest version of Google Analytics is you can have your custom variables. Uh, this is way beyond the scope of this video tutorial, but uh, if you're familiar with Google Analytics, this is pretty neat, uh, pretty powerful stuff. So I encourage you to go uh, read up on custom variables if you're interested in site analytics. Uh, and again, you can create some custom Java code, which is pretty neat uh, with Google Analytics. But that's the last video, um, or sorry, that's the last module that we'll be setting up in this video tutorial. Uh, I'm sure I've missed a few. Uh, the next video tutorial will be covering Ubercart. So I hope this helped out. I know I've been getting messages galore about people looking for the, the next video tutorial in the series. Uh, so they are coming. I apologize, they've been a little bit delayed, but I hope these are helping. And um, if you have any questions, make sure to visit drupal.org slash forums or ubercart.org slash forums. Uh, especially Ubercart because they're pretty keen on, on helping people and they were the ones that prompted me to get this video tutorial series uh, going. They reached out to do that. Um, so again, uh, if these are helping you, please let me know on torontowebsitedeveloper.com and hopefully we'll see you in the fifth video tutorial 